Have you ever wanted to have a peek behind the curtain of the design process? See how initial ideas are refined to become life-changing ones? Well, today you can with Problem Solution. Three design students, three life-changing designs, and one expert in the form of design, its design director, Eva Guerra, providing feedback. Nerve-wracking? Maybe. Enlightening? Definitely. Time to see the session. Hello and welcome uh, to this conversation. Um, I'm very honored to be here um, and to and to be able to talk to to people who um, who have developed uh, three amazing projects. Um, uh, I am Eva Guerra. I am design director at a the global um, a strategic design agency called Design It, part of Wipro family. And uh, I, I am very happy and very honored to be here because this is, this is for me a great opportunity to, to, to reflect alongside everybody here um, about the importance of feedback, the importance of talk about um, and progress uh, our work as designers in a way that um, it can incorporate different perspectives and different um, skills and expertises. Um, so I would like to uh, introduce you to the three people who will be talking and are representing a, a, a larger team of people working in these projects. Um, and, um, and we can start the conversations to, to, to understand what their project is about, uh, what the design process is like, and we can reflect together um, on the next steps and where where their own projects are going towards. So let's start. Hi, Paula. Hi. Hi. I'm really I'm really excited talking to you about um, your project called Map It. Would you like to tell us more about it, please? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I have a presentation prepared. So first of all, hi, my name is Paula Cepeda. I'm a fifth year student of interaction design at UDD in Santiago, Chile. Um, in my design practice, I am very focused on technology for social design. And for this instance, I come to present MAPIT. It is a group project with two great, very talented classmates, Alfredo Arela and Sebastián Camacho. And we did it early 2020, in which, of course, due to the pandemic, we were all confined for over seven months. And we wanted to improve the situation for children because they were even more isolated than us. Unlike us adults, they couldn't meet up for playing, for example. Um, so about playing, the three of us in our team, we had great memories of our childhood when we saw this classic city carpet where we played for years. And that's what's nice about it, is that it has no game involved. It's just a playground where we would make up stories, characters, situations about what was happening in the city. It was endless and it was up to us and what we could come up with. Um, this is what's called role playing and much more than a game, it is considered a milestone, a milestone in childhood development. It occurs between the ages of two and 10 years old and by playing it with friends, we learn new words to say complete sentences, imitate sounds, empathize, imagine. It is essential in growing up. Uh, nowadays, we know that not spending time with other children affects their social development and soft skills. Um, here, the pandemic had an influence, yes, but it goes much further. Um, children are becoming more and more isolated. They are less sociable. They have less siblings. Um, they have become very dependent and exposed to screens, which are very harmful at such early age, and they expose them to a great risk that is the Internet. Um, you never know who's on the other side, for which they require adult supervision. Um, they currently don't have any tool of their own to stay connected while being safe and autonomous. Um, not developing social skills directly affects their personality in the future. It goes from the difficulty to express feelings to even psychological disorders. Um, it's a huge problem affecting all kids worldwide and intensifying year to year. Uh, so we wanted them to learn and play in an innovative way and to return to a more analog upbringing without leaving technology behind, but rather use it for good to correct the damage that it has already done. Uh, we must develop new ways to commu of communicating, creating spaces of natural interaction. 
Um, this is how Muppet was born, which is an interactive and analog board for role playing, capable of bringing two children together in distance, allowing them to play and communicate in real time, no matter if they are even on different sides of the planet. Um, it's very simple, very low tech. The idea was to keep the product accessible and just let creativity get the game. Even so, we have a digital version for parents, for example, or people that can't get one. Um, this is the board on the front. You can change the magnetic uh, map environments. You have these two packs in which you can attach figurines. One is controlled by you and the other by your long distance friend. Um, this is what each kid sees at home. This is simultaneous live movement since the system is fully reciprocal. When from Mapid 1, you move the figurine with a CMOS sensor, which sends the position the Mapid 2 receives the coordinates and replicates the movement in real time thanks to an XY mechanism, same one as a 3D printer, and vice versa, of course. Um, so to sum up the design, I'd like to show a small trailer about how the project started and how we tested it with the kids. Uh, their conversations are in Spanish, but it was very impressive to see how they would chat and teach each other new words while being so um, caring and empathetic with each other. It was pure collaboration. So here it is. I hope you can understand most of it, at least by the look of their faces. Hola Max. Sí. Me encantaría verme contigo otra vez. ¿A dónde está en el mapa? ¿Cómo estás? Hola amigo. Y los más ya son de arriba al ruido. tomar de ayuda con nosotros? Me gustaría ir a tu casa a comer un quiquito. También podemos comprar un macarrón. En mi casa no, no cocinan camarones. Un macarrón es algo planito que tiene sabores. Gracias porque estabas muy dedicado. ¿Al qué no voy? ¿Puedes venir a mi casa en el árbol? Juntos. ¿Qué te parece si vas juntos? Y viven el policía y, 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 y los... Yo te quiero mucho. Um, about our design process, well, we had a clear view about what we wanted. We drew some sketches in which we could see this idea of the wall disappearing, merging with the other, becoming a portal in which you can meet up and share the same environment with someone who isn't really there. Um, we knew it was going to involve a lot of technology in order to make this happen, but it had to be invisible for the kids. The parents are the ones to pair the device and to find a match, a friend, to start a connection which is safe, secure, end-to-end. -end. Nobody can access and interrupt the communication of the kids. Um, the parents can rest on the idea that their children are having fun and growing up in a healthy, safe, autonomous way. Uh, we built many, many prototypes from paper, digital playgrounds to actual components until we finally achieved our first MVP. Um, through all of these prototypes, we tested them with kids to see what they would be needing, testing our interaction hypothesis. Um, we were very surprised by how engaged they were. At no moment, they were strange by playing with a magic self-moving toy um, to hear their cousins on the other side. It was very natural. They didn't ask many questions. They just played. Um, our latest model is looking like this. It's more versatile. It can be placed horizontal or vertically. It has different themes of maps and interchangeable figurines, which allows uh, to incorporate different educational concepts, such as the city, numbers, animals, reinforcing learning through gamification. Um, this is one of the things that we like most about this project, is that it started as a COVID solution, just to let kids play together despite social distancing. But then we saw it had great scalability and it could become an educational tool with great value thanks to gamification. Um, right now, our biggest challenge that we have is how to scale this and apply this tangible interface for other situations that could be gamified. For example, speech therapy. There are many kids who are very um, reluctant uh, to these therapies because you have this adult whom you don't know, who demands you to work and even do homework on your speech. So it's natural that many kids don't cooperate on this dynamic and don't feel like speaking. This is actually the case on, of one of my other nephews. Um, so we think 
What if we use map it as a tool for this? Because the child doesn't see who's on the other side. They won't see a therapist, just someone invisible who's playing with them. Uh, so for example, in Spanish, it's very common that kids struggle to pronounce the letter R because it's rrr. So it's very common to do therapy on this. But there's a huge difference between going to therapy rather than playing with someone at your own safe home who tells you, um, hey, I got a new motorcycle. Uh, do you want to join for a ride? Let's go, ride with me. Let's do it together. Rrr. This is a very basic example, of course, not actually comparing. Um, but while talking to educators, there were, we found so many exercises that could be disguised as playtime. Another example, many kids learn a second language when they are little, but it's one thing to learn grammar and vocabulary, but then never really use the language. So what happens when we're older and try to speak, we're constantly trying to recall words like uh, um, we're not fluent or we have uh, pronunciation issues because we never used it for real. So what if I take my nephew here in Chile and connect him with another kid in London so that he practices his English and learns from an actual native English speaker? Um, that could be English homework disguised as fun. So such as those, we are currently searching for new ways that this technology and medium could be used for other opportunities or even other age segments for skills development and fun education. Uh, we have even discussed the idea of integrating artificial intelligence in the future so that it helps to guide the game towards certain kinds of information that you want to introduce. Um, I don't know, let's learn about the digestive system. So you buy the map of the human body, you can get the figurines with the cells, the food, the enzymes. When you learn through an experience, it's hard to forget. And that's exactly what we need in this era where information is so accessible that we're not storing it in here for the long term. We read, we use it and forget. We need vivid experiences for information to stick. Um, so we invite you to learn more about the project on mapit.fun and to play together again. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Many thanks, um, Paula, for, for your presentation. Um, it's, uh, it's very clear that there is a lot of work behind your project and that uh, you, you, you have done a fantastic collaboration you and your and your and your colleagues to to actually get to to this point um what i like most about mapit is that um the fact that technology that is readily available technology that we understand and use every day and it's also accessible and you know probably cheap as well um you know put it together to create um to respond to a need and to respond to something you know that can create goodness. So I I really applaud you and your colleagues on on really thinking creatively on how to solve these challenges with readily available tools and 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 pieces. Um, I, I I mean I think that it is a very robust concept and clearly so you are looking to expand that conceptual you know uh, idea that you had uh, from the math to 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 the dashboards and expanded it to digital um, and other applications uh, more therapeutical and uh, and and or you know even educational um, and i would like you um to 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 reflect um at the same time as you are exploring this scaling uh, your project um, options about how you have designed and ho how you have arrived to this solution and areas where you can and potentially should go deeper if your intention is is one day bring this out of the market which i think you should because it's a fantastic concept um, and what i mean by that is designers very often we tend to do our research we understand the problem to solve we frame things in a way that you know makes sense for us we try to join the dots in in a way that that is um you know that is desirable for the end user that is feasible and that is uh, you know viable um but 
we often tend to focus on happy paths, right? Like what is the goodness that we can create, you know? And that is really great because it's our optimist nature who pushes through and, you know, our willing to do good that pushes, pushes us through, through that direction. And I would like to encourage you and your class and, and your colleagues to think about unhappy paths, right? You're dealing with children, you're dealing with technology and you're dealing with a toy, right? And um, what it will happen and how can you strength your concept if you start exploring what these unhappy paths are, right? Um, and I think that your concept and, and your project um, needs to gain that resilience um, in, in order to, to become better. Um, and what I mean by unhappy paths, right? First, you know, um, you have, uh, you have targeted a very tricky end user, which is children, right? And with children, you can plan whatever you think. There is always an element of surprise in there. Um, so have you considered, you know, the things that can go wrong, right? When when children are involved in and, and the unpredictability of how children behave, right? They will be focused here for five minutes and one minute after they're going to be somewhere else. So what happens, for example, an unhappy path can be what happens when one of, of the two disengages with the game, right? And starts to do something else. Um, what happens, for example, when, um, you know, two children have different boards and they can't coordinate or they they can let magic happen because you know there are two different games of what they are playing and um, what happens um you know if the microphone stays oh, on or off you know if you know all this type of things you know and trying to reflect on, on unhappy paths i think can be very useful and beneficial for a project um and also i know that this can be an uncomfortable research and actually way of of reflecting, but it is almost necessary if you need to provide parents a reassurance that this is a safe toy and you know that it will do good to your children, to their children is what happens if you think as a pedophile, you know, how would you use this toy in order to harm and by understanding potential, you know, areas where your project uh, needs to strengthen, you know, is is where I think um, where I think, uh, you know, um, yeah, your concept will gain some substance as well as, you know, being this exciting idea that you need to expand. Um, and for me, you know, going deep and going wide is not a sequential exercise. It doesn't have to be a sequential exercise, but, it, you know, it, it can be a cyclical one. You can expand your range while also understanding what are the things that you need to strengthen in the concept in the execution and for me probably are both two areas really where where this depthness is needed and is the usability uh, understanding that your user won't have a mental scheme that you can relate very easily and you need to be prepared for for that and um, and the safety of it how are you going to ensure that this is a safe and fun Toy that parents will have peace of mind that the, the child is doing something that is equally engaging and beneficial, beneficial for them. Um, so this is this is my feedback to you. These are my reflections to you, uh, and I would like to leave you with a little phrase. Uh, so also the importance of feedback is. Um, you know, to bring into the conversation um, many perspectives, and in this case, um, I have pulled a, a words that are not mine and reflections that are not mine to hopefully as well give you another another perspective. And this phrase is from a, an American author called um, Lauren Oliver, uh, and this phrase is in a in a book called Delirium that says, "You can't be happy." unless you're unhappy sometimes. And I hope that that is useful for you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. No, thank you, Eva. Thank you. Our next project is called the Yellow Box. And uh, this is the work from students from the Royal College of Art 
and today here with us there's Swati uh, that is going to tell us more about it. Very nice uh, to meeting you Swati, so can you, whenever you're ready, please. Thanks Eva, thanks for the introduction and hello everyone. So yeah, I'm, I'm here to present the yellow box uh, on behalf of my team, Joe, Lissy, Louise and Cheng. So yeah, So Yellow Box, it's a universal language for mental health safety. The project revolves around this question. How might we prepare the next generation to face future emotional challenges to prevent mental health problems? The Yellow Box is the universal framework for individuals to learn, remember and act on mental health challenges. The framework compri comprises of three key components, a series of workshops for school children to embrace mental health, a system of public science to remember those health saving lessons and a digital resource to turn to and act effectively when needed. So starting with learning, uh, focusing on prevention, we have to start early educating the next generation. Yellow Box educates school children, children aged 7 to 12 through workshops run by trained professionals. So what are these workshops made of? The workshop involves interactive lessons on mental health coping tools using physical first aid kit props as metaphors. For example, the stethoscope teaches how to be a good listener, listening to your inner self or others when they are emotionally weak. Uh, each tool represents different topic on mental health, teaching how it can be used to heal themselves or others during emotionally challenging situations. So having physical interaction with these props simulates mem memory aid and uh, memory aid for children. Um, having conversations about mental health children is quite sensitive and involves a lot of risk in triggering episodes. So using metaphors provides a safe way to explain these concepts and have playful interactions around the topic of mental health. Each day's activity would cover a different topic. And one activity is uh, Know Your Best Medicine, where the kids reflect on things that make you happy so that you can come back to them as grounding tools when they need to comfort themselves. And to continue the conversation at home, the children will be given a takeaway kit with detailed descriptions and paper cutout version. Now to remind us, a systemic behavioral change doesn't just happen. So uh, to help people remember these valuable lessons, we must consider how we can reinforce this knowledge in an accessible way. We already do this for other, other types of safety infrastructure with high levels of efficacy. So we propose a public safety infrastructure with mental health safety signage inspired by ISO 1710 standard with Bluetooth beacons meaningfully placed in the built environment. The significance of this infrastructure is that they normalize the topic of mental health and changes its perception among the public that it's, it, I mean, it's normal to have uh, emotional vulnerability and, com and it's common to all individuals. The signs are designed to remind, to provide thoughtful prompts and to direct to useful resources. Each sign is con context sensitive to where it is placed and to the age of the reader. So now, how do we empower people to act? Another challenge is that people often don't know where to turn to, and if, even if they find advice, it's quite complex and hard to process, especially uh, in the moment of crisis. So how can we help and increase the fidelity of care and self-care administered? By providing a sim simplified and clear to navigate content architecture in a friendly format to interact during high stress moments. Our implementation is a website with a simple hierarchy, helping both find emergency advice, but also provide pointers to practitioners and other organizations. To deploy in lower resource settings, a con the content can be easily adapted to other media like SMS services. In order to do this well, we need to engage a range of different parties. Our close collaborators, public stakeholders and users. So we closely collaborate with psychiatrists, pediatricians, uh, policymakers and partners, and external stakeholders like public infrastructure owners, governments and schools, and obviously our users, ch children, parents and teenagers. So why is this ecosystem incomplete? We already have several organizations caring for mental health, but they are a bit disjointed. The touch points between humans and the ecosystem are still not mandated and hard to find. 
the clinical validity for some solutions is still questionable. The yellow box connects the ecosystem, making it comprehensive, universal, and ever present. It simplifies access to information and serves as one place to go to. And most importantly, it creates a universal la language heuristics for mental health. So when introduced globally, the framework, framework is quite adaptable to other cultural contexts and has the potential to create a global impact. Now let's have a look at what's behind the scenes, our design journey. So the project was developed for and won the Royal College of Arts Grand Challenge 2021. Students from various design disciplines were randomly grouped into teams of five under seven different themes. And our theme was next generation interactions. And we decided to focus on next generation physical interactions, that is the human to human in-person interactions. It was a time when COVID hit us really hard. So reflecting on the COVID-19 pandemic, we conducted several interviews and secondary source research on recent studies. Uh, it greatly helped us to realize the significance of the lost in-person interaction. So we started exploring how its absence impacted individual in all the, all the possible ways. And several days of research on, on mapping how such interactions might connect to a human's life, we found all the arrows pointing to one aspect mental health problems, and especially during a crisis. So on exploring the reasons behind these problems caused by life changes, challenges, we discovered the need to eliminate fear of failure and start building resilience from a young age. So during our, during our ideation stage, we used analogies and analogies for prevention and explored all the different preventive measures we come across in our daily life, such as good touch and bad touch, fragile tags on baggages and reflectors on the roads, so on. And we translate, translated each one of them into the context of mental health. We prototyped and tested our ideas in multiple ways. We have designed the content for an initial workshop uh, in collaboration with cognitive therapists and psychiatrists and tested the experience with four children aged 7, 10, and 12, and had follow-up sessions with them three weeks later. And we developed a fully functioning web website ready to be completed with expert content and conducted several uh, expert interviews with representatives of the Helen Hamlin Center, UK government, politicians, NIH, uh, teachers, uh, school managers, psychologists, and so on. In the near future, we are planning to establish partnerships with the local governments and organizations for borough level implementation, uh, for which we'll have to gather evidence to approach them. But starting to build resilience from a younger age and to see them being mentally strong and balanced individuals is a long term process. And the challenge is to evidence this long term future outcome. So in our calculations, complete worldwide treatment for mental health disorders is practically impossible, making prevention the only real tool in the global toolkit. So we are proposing a solution that could be adapted to cultural, economic, and social context anywhere. And uh, we could significant, significantly contribute to reducing human suffering, but also reduce the economic burden and create growth in global productivity by prevention. Thanks to all the experts, mentors, and friends who provided their time and thoughts on this project. Thanks for listening. Many thanks, Swati. What an amazing and incredible amount of effort you've put into this project. Um, you can see it um, not only from your very <laughs> crowded a list of acknowledgements and all the people that you've talked in your testimonials, the depth of, you know, in which you have gone to design the workshops by day and finding the right metaphors. By the way, I'm a big fan of using metaphors to actually pass a, a, a grasp a concept. It it is just phenomenal. I I want to congratulate you and your and your team for 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 the passion that clearly is is visible into this project but also i want to thank you because i feel that is 
such a timely conversation to have the problem that you are trying to address. No doubt, you know, the world is in is in a very tricky, you know, situation in which we are trying to explore and redefine, right? Like what what new normals are like for us in the way that we interact, in the way that we communicate, in the way that we work, in the way that we live and drawing the attention to mental health is really important and I'm so glad to see that students and, and designers are are feeling responsible for leading that conversation. Another great thing that I like a lot about your project is the emphasis on prevention. Designers, you know, we see a problem and our minds and our bodies start to get all excited about the potential of a solution. And this is long term and, and more often than not, we need to step back. We need to, you know, look more holistically at, you know, what is the root cause of these problems and how being not only responsible for a solution that will mitigate a crisis, but also being responsible for fixing the things that are wrong in the in, in the first instance. Um, and I, I I really love that that overview of of the whole cycles of you know raising awareness and creating safe spaces um, and spaces led by the experts about mental health. Um, I believe and always have believed that the best and the greatest gift that design brings to the world is empathy and your project is simply the personification of, of that empathy um, and 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 um, and does it very well. Um, and where, where my feedback is going towards for you and your team is is reflecting on the value of design moving forward, right? Like you've done a fantastic job at designing the workshop, imagining this ecosystem, defining what actors and stakeholders could play a role uh, in creating this ecosystem, which you, you know you can use an analogy. It is like a geodesic dome, right? Like the the right the right junctions and the right um, convergent elements need to be in place for this dome to 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 exist um, my my feedback is about that value of design how beyond your own expertise as interaction designer visual designer um, industrial designer how can we bring um, value into the process that you might embark afterwards and for me there is a lot of that value um, kind of being drawn towards being the facilitator of conversations amongst people that don't relate to each other's experience, right? And designers are fantastic for that. We rely on those conversations happening successfully in order to co-create things with others. And this is a skill, a particular skill that design can be very, very valuable into um, in, in trying to create that neutral space right in which these conversations can happen in which these tensions and disagreements can happen but always having your eyes um, towards decision making towards concrete outcomes and understanding you know what ultimately you want to achieve together so and and, and for me is is not how how pretty is this solution, right? Or how um, how much how, how are you going to fund it? Or what is the commercial model? Again, bring the value of the core, the DNA of what it's like to be a designer and put it into action in order for this to happen. Um, but um, yeah, it is our reflection. And I know that you are at the beginning of your careers and you're about to figure out you know how design can influence uh, this type of things but nevertheless you have those skills in you and you and your team when i say you um I, and this project is is really showing showing those skills in action so well done thank you thank you Eva. thank you so much for your valuable feedback And to finalize, Swathi, um, I also pulled 
uh, the knowledge from very wise people um, in order to 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 potentially give you more than my words in, in this feedback. And in this case, I'm borrowing um, a phrase from John Muir, who is uh, was a Scottish American naturalist. Probably he was one of the first climate activists um, that says the clearest way into the universe is through a forest wilderness. I hope uh, I hope that that resonates with you. And thank you so much for for allowing us to know more about um, the yellow box. Thank you. Well, that was a wonderful call. Thank you. Our next uh, project is Life Kit. Um, I'm very excited to 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 introduce Nandini, who is going to talk to us more about her project um, and uh, over to you Nandini to hear more about LifeKit. Thank you for being here. Thanks Eva. Hello everyone and welcome to LifeKit. I'm Nandini and I'm presenting this project on behalf of my team of three incredible interaction designers, Anna Boyle, Justina Danielik and Michelle Chow from the School of Design at Carnegie Mellon University. Today, we're going to introduce our idea for improving lives, give a brief overview of the features, talk through the research we conducted to develop our concept, and finish up with the value and impact LifeKit could have. So let the journey begin. Our project is centered around the mission of making planning for life, as well as the inevitable end of life, a part of living. Let's take a quick look at our ad to set the scene. So our project began with the goal of helping users plan. However, since the project started in January 2020, the world had changed dramatically. COVID has not only upended into the norms of our lives, uh, it has also transformed our mental models of community wellness and the end of life. For the first time, for this first time, many are realizing their own immortality, asking themselves a difficult question. What would happen if I got sick? For information, we are turning to familiar places. Online searches for wills and the end of life planning have skyrocketed. If your wishes for emergency or end of life were never vocalized, they cannot be acted upon. Our research initially focused on end of life planning and in this area, we discovered two problems. Many are unaware of common legal documents which can be essential during times of crisis and many avoided planning for serious situations until it's too late. Our solution aims to normalize and inform about planning at every stage. To achieve this goal, we integrated planning with the celebration of milestones, removing barriers between knowledge, access and understanding where planning can protect. LifeKip captures significant moments from the past, the present, and allows us to forecast into the future. The app gives us a unique opportunity to pause and think about 
uh, think ahead into the future, providing opportunities to integrate long term planning with celebration in good times and in un uncertain times. The app allows users to take charge of what they can control. So the important things are not left to chance. I will now demonstrate through Michelle's story of how she made LifeKit a part of her life. Michelle has used it, been using her iPhone every day for the past 10 years. It has become an inseparable part of her life. She sees there's a new iOS update. Welcome to life. Michelle sees that the app features um, life moments, life aspirations, emergency prep and legal arrangement. Life moments put significant moments of her life together from the past to the present in the timeline. For example, an upcoming marriage license appointment. Um, and prompts her to care for her future plan. The other tab is life planning. This feature helps Michelle capture her hopes and dreams, prepare for the unexpected, and get legal arrangements set up. Michelle decides to start with something easier to get a feel for her app. So Michelle decides to look at future plans and wills. Um, she decides to start with something easier. Michelle has a dog, so she clicks on pets. Um, her dog's name is Cooper. Her cousin Alex always gets along with Cooper very well. She wants to take care of him if she can't one day. Michelle has decided she will talk to, about, uh, she will talk to Alex about this when they meet in the weekend. So she saved all of her favorite photos of Cooper and authorized a special someone like her partner Chris if anything were to happen to her one day. So she can find she finds this process very easy to do. A few days a few days later, there is a notification reminding Michelle to keep the momentum of planning going. A month later, Michelle gets married. She sees photos from the ceremony have been included. How nice. Uh, now Michelle has the responsibilities. She should plan more for the future for her and Chris. Michelle is then faced with unprecedented times. The pandemic has hit. Current events are very unsettling. Michelle, like many others, will do anything to have peace of mind. The app highlights steps she can take. She wonders what is a medical power of attorney. She learns that it is a person she is assigned uh, to make health decisions for her when she is unable to. She realizes this is vital and she does it straight away. She, uh, she trusts Chris to make decisions, so she authorizes him to be her primary agent. She adds more details um, about when these decisions can be made effective. Um, she provides instructions for uh, the agent. So for example, she chooses to prolong life uh, and then it prompts her to legalize this decision. She sees that she can add more people as agents in this process. If now an accident occurs, even if she will be alone, she can communicate with first responders and healthcare providers to get the information without locking her phone. So now Michelle fills out her medical ID. Um, so in this, she lists her medical conditions and she captures life-saving information for first responders to look at. If an accident occurs she's a, and she's not able to communicate, uh, a first responder would be easily uh, access this without unlocking her phone. So they can know who she is, her medical condition. She can, they can also reach out to her medical power of attorney who can make decisions for her. So in summary, the LifeKit app captures moments from the past and the present and helps us plan for the future. So how did we get here? Throughout the process, we spoke to nine experts in the field of hospice care, legal planning, social work, palliative care. We conducted three workshops, um, conversational games to help 
understand what people mattered the most, what mattered most to the people. We interviewed 15 stakeholders from ages 26 to 87. Uh, we did some creative research techniques such as a graffiti wall to understand how people see their lifespans um, and got hundreds of users input. And we also conducted uh, facilitated workshops with participants to test scenarios and prototypes with them. After conducting and synthesizing our research, we found four main themes applicable to our final design. The first is personal curation. When we asked what mattered most, the common answers were family, friends, and loved ones. The most cherished memories were times they spent in places they love, often with people they cared the most. The second is connecting to the past, present and future, to the timeline features where people can see their life, be reminded of um, planning and its action and brings peace of mind to, um, to take care of the people that matter the most to them. The third insight was to integrate with everyday life because future thinking is not a familiar mindset. We wanted to give users an easy entry to begin planning for many. Using a smartphone is a common everyday practice that the iOS system already consists of a sense of familiarity. Our users felt that this platform would be more secure and uh, more uh, secure with their private information uh, than social media or a standalone app. So lastly, accessibility and ease of use. Life takes, life kit takes advantage of the full iOS system. It's compliant with iOS standards of accessibility and it can be shared across iOS devices, seamlessly integrating to the life of, um, of Apple users. So the value for you, to summarize the value for you, the LifeKit app helps you manage a crisis, be less avoidant about the topic of end of life, and it normalizes planning through our life and makes it less of a chore. And more importantly, it enables peace of mind because you're prepared for what life throws at you. By providing an application at the operating systems level, it is not only beneficial for you in a connected ecosystem, but it also allows a company like Apple to have a customer for life. Inspired by the health kit and the home kit, um, LifeKit provides a software framework for third party companies, say, for example, a life insurance company to connect directly to your phone to make your important information accessible and also provide more services to you. We're really excited about this, that the iPhone could provide a platform that could integrate LifeKit into larger systems such as legal, health, financial, etc. We see a lot of opportunity in designing digital infrastructure that's integrated to help you navigate the complexities of life right there on your phone. So how does this all relate to the broader picture? Well, imagine a world where everything is connected and seamless, where you don't have to worry about your, where your paperwork is. Digital infrastructure like the LifeKit and the API will help more people be prepared to interact with complex systems and complex situations and in turn improve the overall life and life goals. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, this year we won a Core 77 Design Student Award for Consumer Technology. Uh, we're, ex we're excited to explore the possibility of making this project a reality. So we'd um, love to hear your feedback. Thank you. Nandini, what an amazing award. Congratulations to you and everybody in your team. Um, it's fascinating to hear that your work and your reflections are resonating with more people and I can imagine why. Um, I love the topic that you are bringing to the heart of this conversation. It is so simple to understand that every beginning has a pathway and a life and but also has an ending um my heritage is mexican so i have a very peculiar relationship with death right um i'm not i'm not scared of it we mexicans celebrate death and we do it in a in a way that is probably unique to the world uh, and our culture but you know for me you know understanding and choosing um Choosing to address this topic is really, is really, really, really great. Um, for me, 
uh, the way that you are nailing down um, and bringing complexity, a very complex, you know, topic with how do you manage life into a simple solution that can be easily consumable is also one of the biggest strengths in your in your project. Um, and I think that as you as you advance into understanding, you know, um, the complexities of humans, uh, it is it is very necessary to bring potentially other expertises where design benefits, uh, you know, and especially your project can benefit enormously. Uh, I I am thinking, you know, that there there is moments um, in which design needs to recognize what are the limits of what designers we can do and what are the limits of what we designers can address and solution about and having that boundary i think it is very important for your project because there's so much that you can do and probably you are facing now you know the the um, yeah the paradigm of who, who else can I bring to the conversation in order to make my project better? And I'm thinking, right, like you would need to bring social science at the, at the heart of this project, anthropologists, behavioral economists, to really understand how do you deal and how do you design around something that we humans are programmed to avoid? We are programmed to survive and we are programmed to avoid death. Right, and everything that confront us with the reality that our own life and our own existence has an end, it goes against our own survival mode, right? So it is an interesting tension, but also we know that you cannot just close your eyes and pretend that death doesn't exist. And by doing so, you leave a lot of harm potentially for, for the families who then need to deal with with the with 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 the with the loss of somebody who has left a life unprepared and you know especially in this digital era where you need to know passwords and understand how the digital life can be managed you know the the the, the amount of complexity is only multiplied um so it is very important to recognize where design is 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 having its limits as discipline and what are the different things that you need to bring at the heart of it um, another thing that i really think is important to reflect on is designing for longevity so we are in a moment in which you know life is uncertain next month is uncertain we don't know what is going to happen you know and technology is is following this 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 speed of thought and this speed of life probably technology as well is pushing us to think faster to act faster and to do things in a faster way but i i want to draw the attention to the, to to the fact that design can also be intentional in perpetuating certain important conversations and to facilitate that you know those steps for other for other human beings so i think it is really important to 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 reflect in our own practice as designers what is the long term that i'm contributing to in in projects right uh, how can i you know see after a deadline or a trend or you know seeking the opportunity of the moment and look and reflect on you know what am i going to leave in the world you know what is what is going to be my 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 legacy um so it, it is uh, it is definitely something to explore and this conversation i don't feel that can be detached from understanding ethics and the role of ethics in us as designers. There are many, many things, you know, involved in, in, in the little interactions that, that you have shown that require a deeper ethical framework in, in order for us designers to think, to reflect and to take and to take conscious and intentional decisions, understanding the potential consequences of what we are contributing to. So, um, uh, I, I think that you know it, it is 
more than feedback, it is areas for me in which this project can evolve and different aspects and ingredients that you are needing to now bring into the conversation and opening up um, for your project to flourish. Finally, um, I think it would be really great um, to and because designers cannot be detached from this component in understanding how it is this project, how this project is going to be commercially viable. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, you are attaching your project very strongly to to one particular brand in a particular ecosystem, and that is absolutely great. But of course, you know, uh, it will add resilience for you and your and your and your colleagues to reflect about what will be a plan B, right? Uh, how can how can we make this commercially viable if plan A doesn't come to fruition? How how where is the value that we're creating with people? What people will be prepared to pay for? Um, and I think that again, design it is it needs all the time to 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 turn around these three touch points. Is my product service um, and, and design uh, desirable for the users? It is technically feasible, or you know. It, it is feasible to do it. And finally, how is it going to make money? How is it going to, to be sustained? How is it going to be existing in the world, creating value and people finding the value to engage in return? Um, and I would like to um, offer you as well a quote from a, an amazing woman who has inspired me um, uh, throughout my career as a designer, which is Marie Curie, um, Polish and, and French, naturalized French, uh, physicist and, and chemist, uh, very famous for her work in radioactivity and a pioneer for, for what I believe, you know, um, women can bring to this world. Uh, and Marie Curie said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Fantastic project. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your feedback and that amazing question. <laughs> Thank you all very much for letting us know uh, about what's going on in your world and the projects, the amazing projects that you have spent um, time working. And I would like to just enlarge the conversations beyond my own reflections and my own thoughts um, on, on your projects. And, and uh, you know, Paula, Swathi and Andini, you've been hearing, you know, also the work from 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 the other teams. And I would like to know if you would like to share uh, a word of feedback or uh, advice um, for for them. Uh, Swathi, I, I will start with you. Yeah. Yeah, so and uh, thanks for sharing your projects, Nandini and Paula. And to be begin with, uh, map it. Uh, I really love it. Uh, I mean, I think it brings out and appreciates uh, the importance of dialogue and conversation between children of the same age really well. And I think uh, that's something which is quite overlooked when we consider what uh, what is important for a child's learning. Uh, journey. So I think it, it, it's really helpful for the coming uh, generations uh, that too when uh, education is becoming online and children don't really get to interact with each other. So yeah, that, that's a really wonderful project and thanks for sharing. And for Life Kit, and yeah, that's an amazing project and um, I think it, it would be really useful for everyone to um, like know what's important and uh, it emphasize, emphasizes on the priorities of each person to, uh, to uh, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I think it would be useful for everyone. And I also think it would be really nice to see if uh, if it could uh, build motivation and acceptance in people when uh, plans don't work due to the uncertainties of life. So yeah, I think that, that's an amazing project. Thank you. Thank you, Swathi. Paula, would you like to share something with Swathi and Nandini? Yeah, for sure. Uh, first of all, I loved both projects, so I wanted to comment, make a comment on both. Um, I was fascinated by the yellow box project. I loved how playful it is and how you chose to use analogies for prevention, like the pill box of happy thoughts or the anxiety thermometer. It's very clever. 
I have worked a lot with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and how to work with rituals control in order to lower the obsession. So as a feedback and someone who personally struggles a bit with this, I would just say that we as designers have to be very careful when designing uh, therapeutic tools so that this solution to cure one ritual doesn't lead to another kind of ritual of compuls or compulsion, like, oh, I need to type this quickly on my happy pill box or the intrusive thought may actually happen. Because OCD is like that, it jumps from one fear to another. Um, I personally find this a uh, fascinating challenge and would love to stay in touch, in touch with you and follow your project because it's completely of my interest regarding OCD to design new tools that are non-compulsive. So congratulations, it's all I can say. And for Nandini, I love the idea, especially thinking about legacy. I was thinking of two scenarios to be able, for example, to read and go through somebody's life when they are not here with us anymore. Um, what were their dreams? Can we finish them as a family member, for example? Or people who are starting to forget because of Alzheimer's, dementia, how can they go back through their life and remember themselves? Um, really nice project. Um, congratulations to you both. Thank you so much, Paula. And Dini, what would you say to? Yeah, to thank you so much, Swathi and Paula, for sharing your amazing design processes. Um, I thought all three teams did a very interesting investigation into um, how COVID has affected our lives, but looked at it in very different perspectives. Um, I really enjoyed how playful MapIt is. Um, and especially your explorations through physical computing. It's really bringing all of these emergent ways of thinking about design together in this very like tangible, fun, um, connected way for, for kids. So I, um, I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, Yellow Box, I think you could work really well with Life Kit. Like it could almost be, uh, um, as you had mentioned, like what happens, you know, after a loved one has passed away? What are what are some of those things that could help uh, a person's resilience? So I could see a lot of similarities and or a potential to pretend, to collaborate in that space. Um, I also thought it was amazing that both of you worked with kids or did research with kids, and I would love to know what that process looked like for you, um, especially in terms of getting feedback from kids and how you processed and synthesized that work. Thank you very much. Amazing, amazing thoughts. And this is really inspiring. And I hope for people um, also not being here in this conversation, it, this, this interactions and your presentations and your projects are inspiring and they, they are willing to share with you either good tips or good relations of how can you push these projects forward and, you know, help them to see a different face out in the world, um, but also, you know, what else are you are you are you inspiring others with? I think um, it would be interesting for you to know. And it has been my pleasure uh, of uh, of being with you today, um, and to and to know that design is in good hands and uh, that you are doing amazing amazing work uh, out there. So congratulations to the three of you and thank you. Thank you, Eva. Congratulations to yeah. both of you too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for the feedback. It was great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>